Bye week. Um, much needed. Um, young men, our players got a chance to, to rest up a little bit and uh, spend a little time in the training room and try to get back healthy. Um, also catch up on, school, on some schoolwork. Um, we had five games on the road, and so they missed a couple of Friday classes, so we had to really, you know, uh, focus on catching up on some of that schoolwork that they missed. And um, the coaches, uh, we had opportunity to get on the road and go recruiting. Um, we hit probably about 60 or 70 schools in a three-day span. So uh, the coaches were really getting after it out there on the road and um, had an opportunity to self-scout and um, just look at what we're doing and see what tendencies we have and uh, to see what other teams, you know, they see about us. How do you, how do you doing a bye week, how do you break down self-scouting and then start evaluating the, the next opponent? Do you do more self-scouting? And then when do you turn over to the next opponent? Well, we, uh, the last week it was about us. And um, we, we practiced Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with the guys. Um, but as a staff, uh, we, you know, it was about half and half. Um, we did, you know, take a look at Delaware State to go ahead and get started on those guys. And, um, you, know, um, you know, the other half of the time we were, again, self-scouting. And we just really broke down everything like we were breaking down an opponent and um, combing through and seeing what tendencies we have and, um, you know, just what opponents see about us. In the mid-season, I guess I'd say like the mid-season evaluation, uh, what did you discover having a chance to sit back and watch the film on you guys and self-scout? Oh, you know, we do have some tendencies. And um, uh, we looked at defensively explosive plays that we had given up in the run game and as well as in the pass game. And we were trying to see if that was, um, you know, uh, schematics uh, or, or fundamental technique errors or, um, you know, they just made plays on us. Offensively, you know, uh, we're trying to see what we're doing, what, for, what formations, um, and, and, you know, what worked, what didn't work, and how to get our guys in the best uh, situation so they can be successful. Coach, from your past experiences, what, what did you learn about bye weeks, and is there anything that you implemented into your system that, you know, was something different that you may have seen from your past experiences as an assistant coach for bye weeks? No, it's, about, it's pretty much the same. You know, you got to get the guys healthy, and, um, you know, you have to recharge that battery. You know, it was a long, long camp and a, and a seven game stretch with a bunch of road games. So, um, you know, just let the guys get away for a minute and, and clear their mind. Uh, the coaches get a chance to spend a little bit more time with their families a couple of days. And, and like I said, obviously go recruiting. But, um, you know, it's, it's, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything. You know, we still have to uh, try to maximize our time, but at the same time, be smart with it and give our guys some, a little bit of time off. Do you like the way your players are responding off of the bye week and that time off that you've given them so far in practice this week? Well, yeah, um, definitely. I thought that the three days that we had last week, um, I thought they were very beneficial. Um, you know, then we went out Sunday and, and had to, you know, the guys had yesterday off. So we're about to go out again uh, today. And, um, you know, we ha again, we had to put good practices together and good periods together. And, and you win today, we win Saturday. That's the big thing. Does it, Coach, does it make it tougher? You had a couple losses going into the bye week, too. Does that make it, obviously, you want to go into a bye week with a win. Does it make it a little bit tougher? Not necessarily. You know, the, the guys put them behind them, and, uh, you know, we learn from them. And, and we don't spend a lot of time talking about what happened, you know, uh, two weeks ago and this and that. You know, we're always trying to look forward uh, towards the next game. Whether we win or whether we lose, you know, we're always looking forward, and, and it's about preparing for the, for the next week. But I love the attitudes. Uh, they, they were definitely locked in and, and focused, and, and we're looking for another good week of practice. For the first half of the season, what would you say was the highlight or what was the highs, and what's the one thing you definitely have to improve on moving forward the rest of the year? Oh, the highs? Um, seeing these guys grow and seeing them develop um, on and off the field. Uh, you know, when you get the study hall reports and, and the weight room reports and you're seeing that, you know, it's – Guys were almost 100%. The guys attending, you know, classes and study hall and things of that nature. You're seeing growth, and we've always talked about culture and changing the culture around here. So, you know, that's that's a positive and a high that I've seen growth in the young men. Um, as far as the low, uh, uh, probably the losses. You know, I'm not accustomed to <laughs> to taking too many L's, but um, you know, we getting that corrected, and and you know, uh, you have some growing pains here and there, but uh, you know, I think we have a bright future. Highs on the field through the first few games. Highs, I think uh, again, you know, uh, Darius was was a definitely high. Um, uh, it's, it's good to see what he's accomplished. Um, I think Isaiah Totten has done you know outstanding things and has a you know has a has been really consistent and steady for us. Um, and he's been that you know his whole career here. 
Um, and I think our offensive line is starting to gel. We've had a whole lot of uh, um, trying to piece stuff together there with injuries and, and with the young guys and everything else. So, um, you know, it's coming together. You mentioned that um, these losses are, are not something that you are accustomed to. Is there anything that you're learning about yourself as a first-year head coach as far as dealing with this adversity and, and passing down whatever knowledge, wisdom it is that you have to pass down to your players to keep them motivated this season? Don't ever take winning for granted. <laughs> you know, um, sometimes you win, and, and I'd come home, and you know, my wife would be like, "What's wrong with you?" And you know, why are you upset? And I'm like, "Well, we didn't play well. You know, we could have done this better. We could have done that better." And for so many years, you know, you take winning for granted. <laughs> um, but I, I think that's it. And you know, I, I've learned to, you know, uh, just embrace it and, and enjoy winning. You know, all the wins, however they come, uh, good or bad, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, enjoy them. Um, but, you know, we're excited around here. I think you don't like to look at the past, but just looking at the stat sheet in Delaware State hasn't won here since 77, I think it's in the notes. Does that put more pressure on you guys when, when, when the team comes in here and the outsiders say you're supposed, supposed to win, expected to win games like that? You know, I don't – their record is not who they are. And they are – I think, you know, they're a very physical football team. And – they don't look like a one and whatever football team they are. Um, I think, you know, they have, they have two really good running backs. Uh, they're very physical and they play extremely hard. And, you know, that's, that's what I want. When people see or talk about North Carolina Central, I want them to say that they play hard. And Delaware State, you know, they get after it. And, you know, they've been in some games and, and let a couple of them get away from them. But, um, you know, we definitely cannot sleep on this team. And whatever happened the last however many times, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with, with uh, uh, Saturday. You know, half those guys, those guys weren't even born back in 77. <laughs> I think I was one. So, uh, you know, that doesn't have any bearing on, on what's going to happen Saturday. We just have to come out here and execute Saturday. They also have a, a freshman quarterback I saw in the stat sheet. As a coordinator on that side of the ball, former defender, how much do you want to throw at a freshman quarterback, kind of confuse him and get him rattled early? Well, you, you know, you'll, you'll change up some looks and, you know, I, you have to pick and choose when to bring pressure, I think, because you can sit back in zone and hopefully he'll throw some bad ones and you can catch the bad ones. So, um, you know, you have to pick and choose. Uh, you know, when you're in man coverage, it's a lot harder to get interceptions, you know, in man coverage as opposed to, you know, when you're in zone coverage. Um, but we'll change up some looks for, you know, some looks and uh, we'll definitely, gonna, you know, mix up the pressures on them. But, um, you know, we have to keep the ball in front of us and can't give up any cheap ones. What's his strength, I guess, as a freshman? What have you seen from him on field? He's, he's pretty much like our guy. You know, he's, he's versatile. He can throw the ball, and he can beat you. He can definitely beat you with his legs. And he'll, you know, extend plays and, and keep the drive, you know, drives alive with his legs. So we have to go, do a good job of, um, you know, keeping leverage on him and um, uh, keeping eyes on him, you know, in the backfield. You know, this, this league has been won before with – a team with two losses, so it's not impossible. There is some precedent. Have you kind of preached it to your guys that it's the, you know, your goal is still out there in front of you this year? We talk about winning the day. Let's win the day. Let's practice like a champion today. And that will carry over to Saturday. Let's win Saturday. Um, you know, we don't, we don't talk about uh, championships and all that stuff. You know, uh, you have to stay in the moment and stay in, you know, uh, today. So uh, we'll let all the chips fall out where they may, and, and we'll see where we are, you know, where we are you know, at the end of the season. But we're trying to win today and then, you know, win practice this evening. Doing that fun, uh, doing your off week, bye week, I'm sorry, open week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I uh, got an opportunity to go over to, the, to Shaw and watch uh, Shaw's homecoming against Livingstone. And um, that was a great atmosphere over there. I enjoyed it and got a chance to watch a game and not have any pressure and not have to worry about calling any plays. Although I called a couple up there in my mind, but I was trying to help my boy AJ out. But they did an outstanding job, and, and homecoming was great over there. And you know Shaw is an outstanding institution. That's our mother school. So um, um, that and and I potted two flowers from my front porch. Yeah, my wife wanted some some new flowers on the front porch, so yeah, I got a chance to pot two of them. Oh, always, man, <laughs> always. They look nice though, Jonas. You like them. That's your style, Jonas. I got a green thumb, Jonas. Good for you. Uh.
This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.